Hi guys, PJ here, and today we're looking at another car radio removal and installation video. This particular car being a Fiat Punto 2010 Evo model. Now, to put a radio in this car, as you can see, it's a funny shaped radio. You are going to need a fascia. So here we have the fascia, which is ordered from Connex 2, and the part number being CT24 FT24. And that will allow us to fit the Sony radio into this car. Now, to get the radio out, you'll notice two holes each side of it. You're going to need a couple of release keys, such as these. All you do is push them in until they click. Uh, quite an easy thing. You'll feel a bit of pressure against them. Yeah, and then basically push them apart from each other. Yeah, so you need both hands, one on each side, spread them apart very slightly, any, any a little bit, sort of that much, and pull forward. Just pull forward an inch or so to release it. And so with both keys spread apart and the stereo clicked out, you can go ahead, grab the radio, remove your keys, just pull them out. One, two. Bit of padding down below it because obviously it's plastic and the back of the radio is metal. You don't want to scratch any of the plastic. You might want to cover your gear lever over with a bag. Uh, if it's a leather one like this one, it can easily get scuffed. Just pull your radio forwards and down. And on the back, you will have a normal ISO connector and an aerial connector. Now the aerial connector just pops off. There you go, nice and simple. You're going to need a little adapter for that little stubby one, which I'll show you shortly. And these are on squeezy tabs, so just pinch each side and pull. Do the same for all three. Just pull that one out. There we go. This is the block you will be using, the double black one. Ignore this one. This one works your steering controls. Now, if you're having the steering controls working, you obviously have ordered an adapter to suit. Your local car accessory shop will have to look that up for you. This particular radio installation isn't having the steering controls working. So these will be redundant on this particular vehicle. So we're going to go ahead with that and get our adapter. I'll just plug everything in and then update you when I've done all that as to what I've done and how I've sorted the power out on it. Right, just to update you, uh, we've plugged the little cable in that comes with the radio. Yeah, so it's quite literally on a block connector. Look, it plugs straight into where you removed the old one from. Nice and simple. Now, the other thing you've got to do on these Fiat's is run a power cable, because when you turn the key off, the ignition doesn't go dead on the radio. So all you've got to do is snip the red wire. Yeah, that one there, look, we've snipped it, because there's nothing coming out the back. So there's no power cable connected to that. That's dead. So the red wire, snip it bullet connector it and run a power cable all the way down. I've taped it to it to keep it nice and safe. Look, so I don't chafe on anything. Down behind the dashboard and it comes out here. Because on this particular car, the fuse box, I don't know if you can see it, it's quite dark, is under here. Now, there's a 5 amp fuse on the right, second from the bottom, which is a switched ignition. I've had a multimeter on it to test the voltage and it's zero when the ignition is off. Now your car, depending on spec, make, model, build month, may have a different fuse. So you're either gonna to have to get a multimeter and you know, earth one prong out and use the other prong to touch the top of the fuse to see if it goes live when you turn the ignition on or you're gonna need one of them little screwdrivers that lights up when you touch it. So if you've got one of them, go along your fuses with your ignition off, yeah, touch each one, the top pin of the, the fuse, so if you like, the little silver bits on top of the fuse touch them and basically if your screwdriver doesn't light up that fuse is dead if that's the case put your ignition on and do the same again if your screwdriver lights up that is an ignition switched and what you will be doing is basically tapping into that fuse for your power cable from the radio now you'll notice i've got a little fuse spur here and these are available from most car accessory shops and all they are is a doubler for your fuse so we've put a red 10 amp fuse into it, that'll power the radio, and there's a gap here. Now that gap is for the fuse you're gonna pull out of the fuse box, yeah? And then you plug this into the gap where the fuse from the fuse box came from. I'll do that now and show you what I'm on about. And there we go. The five amp fuse from the fuse box has been pulled out and plugged into the doubler, yeah? We've bullet connected it to the power wire to the radio. And we're now going to put this back in the fuse hole that we've pulled the 5 amp fuse from. That will supply the power to your radio for your ignition switch. And there it is plugged in. Yeah, so it's all plugged in where the original fuse came from. Obviously do that with your ignition off. Now if that sounds a little bit too technical for you, I will give you this piece of advice. Um, 
go to you know somebody that's trained to do it pay a, a company to do it rather than risk damage to your vehicle or injury to yourself okay this is a video guide but if you do think that's a little bit too technical please seek assistance okay right we're going to move on now to the actual radio aperture the hole now it's not quite as simple we have got to remove this this plastic because we need to get this steel cage out that's behind it now you'll notice it's held in there with what look like tx20 or 25 so let me have a quick check for you there's a tx20 no it's a tx25 we're going to take those out and remove the whole thing to get the cage out i'll show you when it's out screws these are tx25s that we've removed okay and i'll show you where they all are now you've got one here one here one there and one there there's also two at the top one here and one here and there's a diagonal one that everybody misses just there now when you've removed all those there are poppers on the top corners okay so you're gonna have to put a glove on i do say that because it's normally sharp the metal cage and then pull and it'll pop out yeah drop it forwards a little bit and you'll notice you've got your hazard warning light switch to remove the hazard warning light switch nice and simple a uh, little push fit connector on it push it in and swing the arm down and pull out to release yeah now do not turn your ignition on with that unplugged because as you can see this particular one's got its warning lights if you've got your passenger airbag warning light on here if you turn your ignition on you will have your warning light come up on your dashboard and you will need to get it reset okay so at that point you can feed your cable in through and completely remove the assembly we're going to remove the steel apart from the plastic so with the whole assembly removed we're going to need to get an allen key and undo these little allen bolts here there's one here one here and two at the back to remove the metal frame and once all your little bolts are removed, you can quite simply remove the metal frame. This piece won't be needed. We'll put that safe with the radio in case the car is ever sold and you want to fit the original radio back in it. So we're left with this piece. This piece can now be refitted back into the car. The reversal of what you've just done to remove it. So put all your bolts back in that you can. Obviously, you're not going to be able to put everything back in because you've removed the actual frame. So you're going to be looking at two bottom bolts and two plastic clips at the top to put it back in. When you're putting your plastic surround back in, don't forget to plug in your multi-connector on the back. It just shoves in and then push the red bar across to lock it. Click it in. Uh, you've got your top locks there that will push in. Bear with me, just get that lined up nicely. You have to feel for where they go in. And once you've got them sort of in position, give them a bit of a, a bit of a whack. Not too hard, it is only plastic and there's buttons on it. You know, don't hit the actual button, just hit the side. Okay, so we're all snugly back in. Put your two TX25 bolts back in the bottom. Up to the end of the installation now. You push your little plastic trim on it, it trim in. It's on some little like spring clips. You just pop it each side and it'll it'll click in. Get the cage that comes with the radio, shove it in, and basically bend these little tabs out behind the plastic so it stays in place. The aerial connector that you're going to use, which is PC527H made by Auto Leads. Very simple, just plugs into the end of the original cable like so. Okay, you need two hands to do it because it needs to click in, yeah? There we go, in. So now we'll shove the cage in and bend the tabs back. Wiring connector plugged into the back of the radio. Okay, so plug your wiring connector in the back, plug your aerial into the little hole that's here, and shove your radio into the hole. There we go, push it in, but not all the way in, yeah? Just so you can basically set it up, program a preset radio station into it. When you've done that, take your key out, basically, cat to five, put your key back in, make sure it's remembered that radio station, okay? If it has, all well and good, click it in, locked, done. If it hasn't, there's a red and yellow wire on the back that I've shown you previously. We've got bullet connectors on, pull them apart, switch them around so that red goes to yellow and yellow, yellow goes to red very very unlikely you're going to have to do that so when you've done it click it in and that is how you fit a radio on a 2010 punto evo thank you very much for watching and if you've got any questions pop them in the comments below goodbye for now